with you guys today. We're going to discuss all the endogenous factors of FICO that you may or may not heard of. Some of them you probably haven't heard of because they're not really marketed and they're not even well known to even the credit repair community. Often in the credit repair industry or people seeking to repair their credit, they just want to remove negative items. And then so there's this romanticism as if removing negative items is going to jump up your score. And the reality is that negative items may not necessarily increase your FICO score that much. And so it, there comes to, there needs to be an understanding of what FICO is calculated by. Now, keep in mind, there are 12 known algorithms in the FICO score calculation. And FICO is from a company called Fair Isaac Corporation, which has nothing to do with all the three different credit bureaus that have your personal information, all your financial history. So let's go ahead and um, go to the whiteboard. I'm going to draw somewhat of a drawing that basically demonstrates this. Okay, so if we ask what are the endogenous factors of FICO, we can look it up right here. Let's just pull up another tab and look up what what is the how is the FICO score calculated? Okay, as you can see right here, here are the calculations according to Equifax, but let's go to, let's hear from the horse's mouth, Fair Isaac Corporation, okay? MyFICO.com. And excuse my cat, my cat is extremely annoying. All right, so this is from MyFICO. FICO scores are calculated using many different pieces of credit data in your credit report. This data is grouped into five categories, payment history, amounts owed, length of history, 15% new credit, and credit mix, okay? So each factor is weighed differently in your FICO score, and the importance of these FICO score categories can be different for different people depending upon their credit history and their profile, okay? The most important factor of your FICO score is your payment history, which accounts of 35% of your FICO score. So your payment history. Okay. Now there's another part. So history is basically a blanket broad statement. What history? How long is your history? The length of it and your current credit history. So if you have bad credit right now, you probably don't have active current history because that's the reason why you have bad credit, right? So let me just go on the whiteboard. Okay. So Payment history. Payment. Oh my God. <laughs> Payment. We'll just put an H. Okay. Right there. Payment history. Okay. So if you have bad credit, okay. Bad credit. You probably are watching the channel. You know, all of my viewers are checking out my channel because they have bad credit. If you have bad credit, you probably have collections. Okay. Let's put collections here. Collections. Forgive my spelling, but I'm not really good with this uh, thing. Okay, collections, charge off accounts. Okay. Ooh, I gotta get better at this. Charge off. Uh, I'm gonna abbreviate because this is kind of difficult. Charge offs, late payments. I'll just put late. Late payments. Okay, so you probably have all of these. These items right here, one, two, three, four, are going to affect your payment history, which is 35% of your FICO score, okay? Now let's say we remove a collection off. Let's say remove charge offs off. Let's say we remove late payments off. All of that is calculated based upon or relative to what you already have. So. A good healthy credit file, like someone that has an 800 FICO score, is going to have like 20 to 30 years of credit length history. So if you don't have 20 to 30 years of credit history, you're probably not going to have an 800 FICO score because I'm telling you from experience, and myself included, most people that have 20 to 30 years of credit length history have an 800 FICO score, assuming that their balances are low. 
So that goes to another part of FICO, which is, it's not written on, well, it's written on there, but I'm not going to look at it. It's, I think it's 16% of your credit, of your FICO score right here is 15% is amounts owed. Okay, let's go 30, 30% right here. 30% of your FICO score is amounts owed, your balances. That's why, that's why if you ever max out your credit card, your FICO score is going to go down. So guys, here's the thing. If you don't already have credit cards, then you really don't need to worry about your amounts owed because you don't have anything to owe. But that's also bad because people that have an 800 FICO score have probably more debt than you, but their available credit is so high, they factor your FICO score based upon how much available credit you have versus how much you use. FICO score is basically like a dating app. The bureaus are like a dating app, okay? View it as a dating app. They're trying to find matches with the banks. The, you know, let's just say the bureaus are like Tinder, okay? You know Tinder, you can swipe, okay? Well, the bureaus are like that. They're just basically matching profiles to find who is the most compatible. Kind of like the horoscope. You're not compatible with this borrower because they have XYZ amount of amounts owed, this amount of credit history, blah, blah, blah. So banks are fishing through this dating app for good customers, okay? The database that they use to basically fish out the good from the bad customers. So you're going to have to cater your credit profile to be as ideal as people that have 800 FICO scores. People that typically have 800 FICO scores can borrow more than what you can currently borrow now. And that is really important, really, really important, really, really important to understand. You're going to have to model people that have an 800 FICO score. Everything that you know about credit, make it obsolete. That's the reason why you don't have bad credit. So a lot of people call or comment or email me and they think that they know it all, but you're never going to really master anything if you think that you know it all, okay? It's like, let me give you the example of a motorcycle, okay? A motorcycle, you can go on the drawing board here. Let me erase this stuff. Hope I can erase it. I should be able to. Okay, here. Let me just erase this crap, all this crap, and I'll make a new drawing for you. A better drawing. Okay. So a motorcycle is like a mountain bike, all right? A bike, here's a mountain bike. Yeah, this is a better, okay? You guys have wrote, written a bike before, right? A mountain bike, a road bike, okay? And it has these gears, okay? I'll draw the gear. This is the bike, my terrible drawing of a bike, by the way. These are the handlebars, and this is where you sit. Boom, boom, that's where your feet are, and then boom. It's like a motorcycle, it works the same way. Okay, so a bike has a gear, a gear. A sprocket right here. Okay, you know where you put the chain. Has a big sprocket there, and then it has a small sprocket here, okay? This, as you basically, um, the wheel turns, it gives momentum to the to the back wheel. Okay, and that's the gearbox. Same thing as a motorcycle. Now, when you ride a bike, depending upon how advanced you are, I have a giant bike. It's like a two thousand dollar bike, it's like a giant fast or something like that. And you have these little knobs. Back in the day, you have these little knobs too, but they're big. But now you have like their pedals, right? It's like a it's like a motorcycle. Same same thing for a motorbike. You have these you have the clutch. Okay, and for a, a, a manual car, you have a you have a, uh, a clutch as well. All right, you have the shift the shift stick, but on a bike, you just have the clutch. Boom, boom. The, the, the gear, the shift lever. Okay, so when you're moving fast, when you have momentum, and I'm giving this analogy as the best way as I can to describe this mentality that people have. When you're on the first gear, you can't really go that fast. You can only go so high up. That that same mentality of first gear resembles who you are right now or what you're doing right now. I wouldn't say who you are because that's a self-identifying statement. 
and that's a self-identifying belief. The problem with these self-identifying beliefs, if you're on self-identifying belief number one, which is basically, let's say there's gear. Let's go back to the drawing board. Gear one, gear two, gear three, gear four, gear five. My my bike has six gears. Okay, special. Okay, so let's just say the first gear is like you're in the 350 FICO score category. Okay, let's say, let's go back to the pillars of FICO. So I'll just write them down here. So we know it's payment, well, payment history. We might need to go back to this. Actually, I like this better. I might need to get a new app. Payment history. I'm going to abbreviate it from now on. And we know it's amounts owed, okay, and let's see what else is there, I think it's credit length, length of history, length of history, and then new credit, okay, new credit, and then inquiries is the last, oh, credit mix. There's many different algorithms, so. Okay, so payment history. Do you guys have 10 to 20 years of credit history? Do you have 30 years? If the answer is no, then you know you need to work on your payment history. You probably don't have payment history because you have late payments that's messing up your payment history, okay? So out of 100 payments, if you miss one, that's 99% perfect on-time payments. You have, to you have to have above it 98% on-time payment history to be adequate enough to get approved for a loan. If you go below that, then lenders get red flag, you get what's called early warning system, or you, your other your other um, credit card companies are really smart because they talk to each other and they get information about you that you don't know how or why. I know I could help you understand where they're getting this information. And that's why credit reporting is so important. You're gonna have to understand where these bureaus, where these creditors are hosting, harboring this information to be used to calculate your risk level. Right. So your payment history, you have to keep in check, ideally 100 percent above 98 percent. But once it goes, once it hits 98 percent, your other balances are at risk and that's going to affect other endogenous factors of your FICO score. Actually, I want to call it endogenous. I would just say that these are the most obvious. Now, when your FICO score is impacted because your payment history and then the creditors are lowering your credit limits, that's going to affect the other category, which is amounts owed. That's going to be very bad. Your length of credit history can be compromised due to the fact those accounts could be closed. This probably already happened to you. Now, to get over the credit length history, to, add, to, to target these, these two factors, you get what's called AUs. Okay, the best way to get AUs is add, if you have a relative that has excellent credit, add them, you know, uh, have them add to their credit card. They have to have ideally 20 to 30 years of credit length history and below a 30% balance. That's the minimum criteria. Actually, below 30% is not good. Okay, you want below 9%. Okay, these are the ranges of your amounts owed, okay? Right here. You can never go above 30% usage on a credit card. Otherwise, like I said, remember that alarm system the bureaus have? Like, oh, red alert, cut it down, boom, you're fucked. So stop that. Focus on your payment history. Don't let your amounts owed be compromised by your lack of payment history or the compromise of your payment history of you having late payments. If you have late payments, you can hire me to remove them. And then that could also affect your future length history because they can potentially close your accounts before you get in a train wreck you have to look ahead guys before you get in a train wreck okay make sure you look ahead make sure you look ahead and understand what exactly you're doing now new credit new credit bureaus need to see you apply for new credit okay I'll put an A you need to apply continuously they look at the technical attributes of all of these components right here to your FICO score. And if you're getting applied, if you're applying for new credit from competing banks that are exceptional, 
and you get approved, your score is going to go up because now you're in your higher, you're in a better risk category. Now, if you apply for the wrong accounts and you're getting denied, let's just say, yeah, there's a level 10 girl that's super hot and there's like a three, a level three girl that's overweight, that's not attractive, doesn't go to the gym, not beautiful, doesn't eat healthy, and just overweight, not good, okay? If you want to get the hot girl and the hot girl knows that this level three girl is kicking you to the curve and denying you and like not giving you the time of day, you're not going to get the hot girl. Your social value is going to go down. Now, if you have a level eight girl,